All right, so at this point, if you're working along, you should have worked your way through some of the files and you know, just lightly familiarized yourself with the, with the general code base. So now for this episode, uh, I've identified a handful of things that I think might be a little confusing to you. So let's clear that up right now. First up, if we go into app.view, you may notice this import at the top has a squiggly here, almost like my editor can't figure out how to find it. And second, what is this alias here? At symbol components, hello world. Well, clearly we are pointing to this file here, but what is that at symbol? Okay, this is referred to as an alias. If we visit our vite config file, you can see it's setting one up right here. So we're effectively creating an alias called at symbol, and that will resolve to a file path to this source directory which means effectively what we're doing here is instead of saying, all right, go into uh, the current directory, but then into components and then hello world, and notice the squiggly goes away. Instead, we can use this alias here. And now, no matter how many nested directories we are in, uh, we can always use this at symbol to point to that source directory. Okay, but yeah, you can see, at least in my editor, PHP Storm, it's a little confused here. So to fix this, eh, we need to give PHP Storm a little more information. So, and unfortunately, this requires a bit of duplication. Create a file called jsconfig.json. And within here, create an object with a compiler options property. So within here, we will declare some paths. And specifically, I want to say, all right, look for that alias symbol followed by a star. That's a regular expression, meaning anything. And I want that to resolve to the source directory like so. Yeah, so you can see I'm kind of duplicating what we have here. Uh, the problem is PHP Storm doesn't know about Vite at the time of this recording, but it will know about this jsconfig.json file. So now, yeah, we're just setting up an alias, anything at symbol followed by characters, I actually want it to go uh, to that source directory. So now if I go back to app.view, there we go. You can see that squiggly goes away, and now I can, for example, command click to instantly visit that file. All right, so that's item number one. Uh, the next thing is you're, you're now familiar with these router links. And again, this is really important to understand. If I were to replace this with a basic anchor tag, like so, well, we'll think about what would happen here. Let's give it a try in the browser. I will run npm run dev. And actually on that note, npm run dev, that is being declared in your package.json file. You can see there is an npm script called dev and all that does is run vite, which means if you want, you could just as easily say npx vite. Okay, so now we have a dev server at localhost 3000. All right, and here we go. Actually, real quick, looks like we have a little typo. Let's go back into this, oh, I'm sorry, roster view. How did I do that? Okay, so anyways, yeah, notice if I click on the about page, it's instant. We're not performing a full page refresh. And you can see that if I click on contact, yeah, you don't see that loading bar. However, because we switched the home link back to an anchor tag, well, yes, it's going to work, but notice that it did perform a full page refresh. So whenever you want to link to a page and have it be dynamic and done through Ajax, you need to use a router link. Okay, and that should do the trick. Home, about, or contact. Perfect. Okay, but next, what about this router view section? This is confusing. Well, let's do this. Let's put these side by side. And now let's see what happens if I remove it entirely. Run it. Oh, and notice we, we don't show the contact view at all. If I go to home, yep, we don't see it. So bring it back, that works. If I go to about, that works. But if I remove it, it disappears. Okay, so clearly what we can see is this will display the corresponding view component for whatever component matches the current route. Say that three times fast. Really what's going on though, is if we go into our router here, notice we have these routes set up and we say, well, if the URI is this, then this is the corresponding uh, component we want to display. Or if the URI is this, then this is the corresponding component. So of course, if we go into app.view, I can't just hard code something. Like I can't just say about view here. So if I were to import that fully, uh, and give this a refresh, yeah, that's going to work, but now we're gonna see about view for every single page. Yeah, and of course the point is we want this to be dynamic and that's what router view does. Display the appropriate view component that corresponds to the current URI. 
and our router is telling us that, for example, this URI corresponds to home view. So if we click through there, sure enough, it's showing a welcome page. So if I were to change this and say, hello, I'm home, and give this uh, a save, sure enough, that updates on the fly. All right, next up, item number three. Uh, if we bring this back, up until the installation of this project, we would reference our components using a dash like this. So notice if I save this, everything still works. So there's no problem there. It just turns out that it's a pretty common convention to use this syntax here. And in fact, for the Laracast code base, as an example, this is exactly what I do. The only reason why we use dashes is because sometimes uh, when we're referencing it globally or we're using templates, we still need to use a syntax that the browser can understand. However, in this case where we're compiling, uh, there's no problem whatsoever. So we can stick to this uh, syntax from now on. All right, next up. Uh, what about this word the in the name of the file? It's kind of weird. If we go everywhere else, hello world, welcome item, contact view, why does this one alone contain the word the? Okay, well, once again, as you'll find with many things, this just comes down to a basic convention. So the general idea is whenever you have a component that's really just sort of like a partial, it's only ever going to be used exactly one time throughout the entire project, uh, it's a common convention to proceed it with the word the. And again, that's just a hint to anyone who looks at this file six months from now that, hey, this is sort of a one-time thing. And that's why we call it the welcome. There's no situation where we're going to have, uh, for example, five different instances of this component. It's a one-time thing. So in those cases, yeah, it, it, you don't have to, but it's a common convention to precede it with the word the. Okay, so let's open up this welcome section. And yeah, you can see it's divided into all of these welcome items. So here's one, here's another one, here's another one. And of course, that corresponds to each one of these as well. So this is a common thing. We even worked on this a few episodes ago to, to reduce uh, code and style duplication. Think about it. In this case, every one of these welcome item sections contains an icon, a heading, and then a description. So let's see what we have here. All right, a section to define the icon. And notice we have that hash, and we learned about it uh, a few episodes ago. So that should be pretty familiar. Next, we have a section for the heading itself, and that's called documentation. And then finally, it looks like the default slot goes right here. So if I remove that, it goes away. If we wanna change the heading to docs, that updates. If we wanna use a totally different icon, of course we can. Okay, let's dig into a welcome item. And yeah, oftentimes the, the components you create will be almost like basic skins where you can deposit uh, HTML or text wherever it needs to go. Now, no matter how many welcome items you have, you don't have to repeat yourself over and over. Instead, we just say, okay, let's create a new welcome item. And here's the icon I wanna use. And here's the heading I wanna use. And here's where my default uh, content should go. But what's cool about view components is we can define the template outside of the script, which makes it a little more flexible. And then also notice that we can create styles within the same file. So a view component allows you to declare the HTML, the script behavior, and the styling all within a single file, which is really neat. But of course, don't forget these things are all optional. So if in your case, you don't like doing your styles here, you want it to be in a traditional app.css file, uh, well, of course you could always uh, using a bundler, you could extract all of this into an app.css file. But otherwise, if you if you just want everything contained in the same place, you could select everything and extract it manually. So there's nothing that says you have to create styles within a .view component. It's just an option if you want to. Next, notice in this particular file, there's no script section. So notice there's nothing like this where we export an empty object. In the case of welcome items, there really is no special logic or behavior. So in those cases, we can omit the script section entirely. And yeah, I think you'll find that uh, components like this can be incredibly useful. Okay, so now let's say, I don't know, let's pick one of these random ones for ecosystem. So that corresponds to this. Right at the bottom, why don't we say, now visit the about page. And as you learned, we can't just use an anchor tag. So if I created an anchor tag to about, 
Well, actually, of course you can do that, but just remember once again, that's going to perform a full uh, page refresh. So even when you're outside of your main route section, if you ever want to link to a different page, I, I just want to make this crystal clear, and that's why I'm circling back, make sure that you import router link from view router. And you'll see that, uh, I guess I have to do it right here. Import router link, import router link from view router. Okay, and now this is an easy one to, to miss. Don't forget to update your href or your href to uh, a two property. Okay, so now we try it again, and this time it instantly visits the page without performing a full page refresh. So yeah, what was that? Four or five just little things that might, uh, might have tripped you up. So again, hopefully you're starting to get a little more comfortable. In the next episode, though, I'm going to push you even further.